was in Sullivan the freshman year, there was lots and lots of fights. I couldn't learn anything because it was like basically students in class which is, you know, disturb the peace. I had this really rough class where there was a lot more disrespect that I faced. Just in terms of kids feeling like they could talk to an adult however they wanted to. Like there wasn't really a different way for them to speak to the adults in the building. The kid that we're looking at now is somebody who likely sees trauma on a daily basis, is full of anxiety 99% of the time. In the past, what has happened is either the student gets suspended or it's usually they'll talk to the dean of students and they'll come back but they'll come back really upset. I would say the offender or the situation with that student I would just say well you know what I'm gonna look at the student code of conduct you're getting suspended that's it. I believe that when you suspend the student the only thing you're telling them is go home and have free time that's the only thing that you're doing when it comes to their classwork you making them fall behind. You know, how is that really going to justify the students change mentally, socially? How is it going to change in that aspect? The punishment is so harsh and there's no conversations that go along with them. We don't teach them that. We don't teach them to take responsibility on what happened. We don't help them to reflect upon what happened or what they've done. So you'd be the first one in your family to get a high school diploma, first one to graduate from Sullivan. We're 0 for 2 with your family. I want to be 1 for 3. And you're this close. Graduation is May 3rd. When you talk of restorative justice and reduction of suspension, the biggest misconception is that when kids make mistakes and we don't suspend, we're letting them off the hook. That's their whole life has been wrong someone and then run from it. Wrong someone and not talk about it. I would tend to think that we are actually making them more on the hook. You're not supposed to reward them by giving them free time. You actually, you should help them out and say, you know what, we're gonna keep you in school so you won't be behind. There's a time for aggressive punishment when you jeopardize the safety of a building, but the greater majority of incidents that happen do not jeopardize the majority of the building. I think the greatest change was in me. I began to see the same behaviors over and over again. And when I realized it, I said, wait, I said, something else is wrong if Johnny can't stop fighting. So then I reached out to our clinicians, our social workers and our counselor and our case manager. And I said, look at this. I need you to look at the behaviors that I'm seeing. Find out the trigger. What's triggering him to that point? And then once we found that out and I began to really look at it, it was time to stop talking about the problem and making a solution. What we want to teach our students is to kind of navigate through that conflict, take some accountability, ownership of that of when you do harm, and really learn the skill of reflecting on it. When we have to start up conversations with the students, when we can talk one-on-one -on -one and, and share our feelings, like, this is how I feel right now. This is how you affected my teaching. This is how this impacted everybody else. How do you feel about this? Or what would you do if you were me? And suddenly now they're being they're confronting it in the moment, being present on what really happened, rather than making up excuses or rationalizing it away, blaming someone else for it. So we do a lot of peer-to-peer -peer conversations and teaching them how to talk to each other. And then we also do conflict resolution, a lot of that. We've also established more of a culture of respect and a culture of positive interactions. We're really stressing positive relationships. It's adults in this building that will give you a different point of view. It, most of the time, it prevents things from happening. When they start seeing other people, you know, faculty and staff members, generally caring about them, not just, hey, how you doing, but actually, how are you? Other faculty members here, they want us to graduate on time. This year has been really, really good. The hallway is peaceful. You have students in class. Grades went up, scores went up, NWA went up. We show them grow. It's like everybody's trying to learn right now. Everybody's trying to pass and trying to learn something. All the other teachers here, they are very supportive. They really want you to do the right thing when it comes to education. And like, they want you to have a really good life. They don't want you, they don't want you out in the street. When I began to really assess the communities, where they're coming out of and what's going on with them at home, then we wanted this to be their safe haven. If I need help on something, I can go to one of the teachers, the staff. They make you feel like you're a family to them. You mean something to them, you're very special. We actually listen, we talk to, we mentor, we give and help develop skills to students that might not have necessarily had them. Some of the students look at us as fathers, mothers, mentors. And that's the difference, the concern, the compassion, the love, and that's called real love that they're giving them. And what I want to see is less students giving up and more students making the decision and the choice to be somebody positive in our community.